Off the ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. And you're very welcome back. Uh, my guest has actually just turned around. Jamie Heaslip, you're here. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. You love the you love the quietness of the studio, you're telling me. I like the calmness in here, yeah. Calmness. Yeah. They, a bit different to the dress rooms you were in back in the day. It's a, it's a little bit different. Um, not as much noise. You don't hear the, the stadium shaking or rocking. Um, but I'm sure we can pipe in that sound if I get a little bit uncomfortable. We can. How much are you missing it not being in Japan right now? Uh, well, I'm going out tomorrow morning. All right. I'm flying out first thing tomorrow morning. Just throw that out there. Yeah. Feel bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, who uh, part of your team is out there? Who got the Who got that nod? Uh, who is out there? Obviously, well, Owen Sheehan is out there. Um, apart from that, uh, so only the big dogs get the travel. Sure, song. Gilroy, I think has gone out there as well. Um, so the proper big dogs. Yeah, some of the heavyweights. Um, I was actually I spoke to Brian O'Driscoll when he was on before the tournament started, and he said he was spending much of his time in kind of Ireland and England before going out because it was like seven week trek if you were out there. Uh, yeah, lot, I mean, which is a lot. A lot of people don't realise for the players like it's 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 not even seven. It's an eight week, usually yeah. an eight week trek, two months in country for the players, and then obviously the whole build up that's been happening since what June they got mm. together, middle of June. So it's a big window, pressure cooker building from a long, 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 long time out. But yeah, I, I was of the same to the sound similar to, to De Bruyne, where I um, I said I'd stay put for the group games and then I'd, I'd go out for uh, the knockouts and I'd stay all the way out to the, to the mm. final. We're going to talk uh, with uh, Jamie about the New Zealand game and uh, our prospects victory, but we want to talk about your book, which is <sighs> Jamie Heaslip, All In, in conjunction with Matt Cooper. Um, I, I believe you had a book launch this morning, actually, had you, because I spoke to somebody earlier who was at it. Oh, there you Shane, go. Shane Supple, former oh. Bohemians keeper. There you go. We, uh, yeah, I've been jumping around. My, my, um, it's been a mental uh, couple of days. Uh, we kind of... I've had different kind of launches at different times and, and pushing it out, but it's out, it's in the shops and uh, it's been a very uh, introspective um, experience over the last couple of months. You know, I mean, it started in in January, February, um, really, when we got into it. So it's been a mental kind of, like, not too dissimilar from the lads, building, 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 and this yeah. is... How, how, how does it work when you do a book in conjunction with the journalist? Because it's kind of, like, it's put forward as, like, an autobiography, which it obviously is, but, like, Eamon Dunphy obviously was key to Roy Keane's book, yeah. and um, I've read some books where it's clear that... The, the, the guy, the ghostwriter, is almost writing, is almost saying what he wants the person to say. So how was your relationship with Matt Cooper and what was it like? It was good. You know, I, I admire um, some of Matt's, Matt's uh, previous work. And then also um, I had gotten on very well with him on and off air and the different, you know, yourself, the, the, the different things that you kind of do throughout the, throughout the time. And um, when I was looking around, like I'm not a writer. So I was never going to write it myself. And, Very honest of you. Uh, I, I thought you're encroaching on our territory these <laughs> days. Um, I thought as well that it, you know I didn't want to ghostwrite it and claim that I wrote it or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I thought that would be unfair. So uh, when I looked around, different people like Matt's name kind of stuck with me, and um, you know as well I'm I hey. You could you could say that I I might see the world through either uh, through blue tinted glasses in the form of Leinster in, mm -hmm. at times, um, and I thought you know what a better way to to keep myself honest and have a diehard Munster fan um, in Matt Cooper and we had good banter around it, um, but he was really good and you could see as well his different skill sets throughout his time um, from being uh, a journalist or a kind of a host or an editor and mm. um, the different hats that he'd put on at different stages. Um, but the real key was the actual process of sitting down with Matt. I think we had nearly 30 hours of work. I'm oh, sorry, of um, conversations. Used, yeah. Um, that, that, that's, that's a lot of transcribing. It's yeah, like yeah. Well, transcribing. He, he wasn't transcribing, but he was definitely, yeah. it got transcribed for him, but he okay. obviously had to go through all the, mm. all the data that came through. Um, but that actual talking part, um, you know, I, I I didn't notice if he was trying to steer me any particular way. He would give me talking points coming in, like this is kind of broadly where we're starting. But many times we went off on random. Is tangents. it like therapy in a way? V yeah, I, uh, whether I, you want it to be or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I suppose that's the skill in him, isn't it? Trying to pull it out. Um, I heard that. Um, Richie Sadler as well is doing one um, with a... Oh, he is. With a big. But I'd be, I'd be very much like, 
God. No, not the book, but you know why Richie does his own uh, show. Sorry, yeah. Um, and I was like, I, that's the last person, a psychologist, that's the last person I'd want to, because mm. he'd have the skills as well to use some Jedi mind trick on me to to say, I don't know, to pull something out of me and I start crying. Yeah. But um, He's a very good writer, Matt, as well, yeah. which helps. Like, I mean, he is, no. sorry. And his previous body work has been really, yeah. really good. Um, Who really owns Ireland, a fantastic book. Yeah, he, I... I, I um, I like. I really liked the process, and I very rarely looked back when I was playing. Mm. It was very much the now and what's next. Uh, so it was, it was a bit cathartic to to look back. Brief brief chat about the book. Um, this is an excerpt. I wouldn't say I was Eddie O'Sullivan's biggest fan, even if he was the first coach to pick me for Ireland. He couldn't even get my name right at the first couple of international camps that I attended. Twice I had to correct him because he kept calling me my brother's name, Graham, uh, who he had coached in Connacht. I didn't really appreciate that, and it's not something that ever happened with any other coach. You then go on to describe how he wasn't happy with you wearing white boots. Um, I kind of agree with Eddie on this, but I wouldn't yeah. oppose it on the player. And he also, I think he described you as immature, was it? So your relationship with Eddie, who you now obviously share a TV platform with. Yeah. And an Apri or not an Apri match, but a Richard Cooper uh, yeah, and platform, I'm, I'm, which is one of... I'll Richard have to pull, that, pull that up on Richard. I'm, uh, I'm doing something <laughs> with him on Saturday. He, apparently he's out in Japan. Richard. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to have to pull him up on it. Yeah. Um, Eddie O'Sullivan, let's chat briefly about you and Eddie. <laughs> uh, how are you getting on nowadays? Well, like... Silence is golden. Yeah, I mean, we're both on to do a job, but, like, mm. we're not exactly hanging out with each other afterwards. Mm. Um, would probably be a fair description yeah. of what the relationship is like. I think you're even harder than Richard Cooper was on the relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, um, look, I mean, it'd be very boring if we all had the same opinion, right? And he's coming from a very different perspective, um, a, a former uh, kind of coaching uh, manager perspective. I'm coming from a... Um, a playing perspective um, w with teams that you know had a lot of success over the last while, and and with obviously under the the, the current Ireland coach as well. I you know I was under Joe's tutelage from 2010, and so I'm giving a different taste on it. Uh, sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. Uh, I'm also learning that uh, craft, for want of a better word. Um, what do you mean? Well. You can't just disagree on every single point, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. which I learned on, on day one. Um, but, you know, uh, as well, I'm quite used to doing commentary, um, and on TV is quite different. You know, it's, it's like two-minute blocks or whatever it is. You know, you've got to get your point in, get in. Yeah. Out. It's, it's very different. And How I'm are you enjoying that. it then, like the, the media side work? Um, yeah, I'm kind of like I'm poacher come gamekeeper now, mm. really. Um, it's not, I really like commentary. Like, I really like commentary. Cold com. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't want to do the main comms. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's a different ballgame. Oh, obviously. my yeah. God. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, like, hats off to all of those guys. Um, particularly with the pronunciation uh, on, on some of the players. Playing Samoa and oh, so forth. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, Joe would actually make a great commentator because he knows everyone's names and he knows pronunciations down to a T. Um, but there you go, Joe, for life after rugby. You're, uh, you're also, your life after rugby entails essentially you're working for Google. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm there now. Um, I started December 3rd last year. Yeah. What was that transition like? Um, you know, because you're, 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 not like, you're not like a run-of-the-mill rugby player. You're like one of Ireland's most capped players. You captain Leinster in Ireland, but then you have to begin life after. Mm. Um, you got involved in some um, purchasing, um, bought the, the, the bridge in... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah still yeah. in that? I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we still have that. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend it. Actually, nice boozer to be fair <laughs> for a Leinster game, the RDS, whatever. But how is life being in Google? Uh, it's very different. Mm -hmm. um, you go from being, uh, you know, top of the totem pole, you know, the best, you know, the person, with, not the best, sorry, but one of the people who um, is kind of like a, a thought leader in in the space, you know, and, and you're kind of part of that senior kind of thinking and group and experience mm. to you're like the bottom of the pile. And that can take a shot at your ego um, if you let it, um, very hard to deal with. And then, you know, your time, while in rugby, your time isn't your own. You do have a, a lot more control over your time, I suppose, because you have to, because you have to kind of manage your body and your time and your energy. In like corporate world, obviously that's a little mm. bit different. Mm. But it's uh, how yeah. do you find the corporate world? It's 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 different, man. It's um, you know nine to five. You got targets to hit, schedules and all that sort of stuff. But I, I enjoy my role and, and the team that I'm part of is is um, really good. My, like my, I've had some really good managers. Um, particularly the, uh, Ross Mooney is the name of a guy I work with right now. who's my manager, and he's been really good in, in helping me. Um, 
bolt on those hard skills and processes that I need. You also speak in the book about um, Deck and Kidney being replaced by Joe Schmidt and thought this was quite interesting. What we got from Joe and what we hadn't been getting from Decky was decisiveness. He might not always have been right, but at least he was certain. When Joe made a decision, it was firm, and he told you straight up, this is the way we're going. Everyone knew which way the bus was going, and players had to decide whether they're getting on with it or not. Yeah. Joe delivered his points quickly, very rarely holding meetings that last more than 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. He's a teacher at heart. He distilled the information clearly and concisely and provided the action points. It was a world away from the methods employed by Decky, who, despite all being, despite also being a teacher at heart, tried too hard to please and anyone aching not to cause offence. Yeah, so they, I think they have two very different styles. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Decky tried to probably give us a lot of autonomy. It's probably the best way to describe Delegate it. Delegate responsibility. A, a, yeah, a little bit. And then, and, then, and then think about the collective kind of energy and group and mindset and, and, and see if we can get us in a really good headspace. And I think uh, Joe was, was the other way of, of, of kind of... Um, really laying out the roadmap. This is where we're at. Yeah, this is what we're doing. And get on board or, you know, if you didn't get like, uh, I remember, I think it was, I can't remember what player it was anyway. Um, I get in trouble if I said it. Mm. Um, but they would, I think they kind of said, you know what, Joe, the train is going. You know, the train is going this direction. And you either get on or that or you're Get on it. Yeah. And play, play that way or like, and you'll more than likely have success or don't get on the train. It's as simple as that. Or he'll kick you off if you don't. Does does that reach its shelf life in terms of like Joe? I think Joe references for the World Cup where like rugby is changing every six months mm. effectively, and I'd say what Japan have brought to this tournament is something that Ireland aren't really accustomed to. But in terms of your man management and your if not aut aut autocratic regime, just a kind of a I'm 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 the boss here. Does that reach its shelf life and like do people eventually get tired of Joe? Um, it's a good question. I I think. I think any everything needs to needs a change up. You know, any sort of person who's who's the head of an organization, I think it's always a constant challenge of how you keep things fresh, how do you think keep people engaged? Um and it's a constant battle. Um and if you look like Joe Joe with those what, three years in Leinster and then he moves into into the Ireland job, um and he's he's there since what, two thousand and thirteen, isn't it? Um so he's there now, six years, you know, and, and that, that does become a cycle. But obviously, you always have that, those players changing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you do have that Fair change. Belt, yeah, right. exactly, mm -hmm. that change happening the whole time. But sometimes you'll get players who are there that entire time, and you kind of get used to it. Um, and that's good and bad, I suppose. But in terms of I th I, the game, like, uh, like pe people are asking me about Ireland, should they do this, should they do that? You know, I think when you look at Ireland, I think, the way they play is the way they play, and that, that's what they've done for the last four years. Um, and I think they've been really, really consistent. And this squad, in general, have there's been a lot of firsts for this squad, mm. and I think they're in a really good place. And I think they're come, they're think come, they're in a really good place. What? Well, let me kind yeah. of uh, roll it out. I think they've come under heavy criticism over the last couple of games, right? And I think a, a lot of it comes off the back of the Japan loss, which I think, I'm not saying it's justified, but Japan are playing some amazing rugby Absolutely, right now, yeah. right? So maybe let's have a bit of context on mm. that. Um, the other games, like if they'd won that game and we gotten the results in the Samoa game and the uh, Russia game, I don't think they'd be getting this pressure heaped on them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for them, like if you're in the camp, you're probably looking back going, well, we got bonus point win, bonus point win. Um, okay, we lost against Japan. Why did we lose against Japan? X, Y, and Z. They played an expansive game. We got a little bit narrow in defence. Those sort of things. We made a lot of mistakes. And um, that's probably good preparation for New Zealand, who won't be in the way they play, not too dissimilar, I suppose, um, in certain aspects. So it, that's what I mean by they, they would have constant. They know that they don't have to fix a whole lot. It was just really their error count and and their set piece, like executing from their set piece. You think mentally they're fine going into New Zealand? I think, I think mentally they're ready. Yeah. Like I think mentally they'll be in a really good place. Well, say from last November where they're like top of the world in terms of beating New Zealand yeah. and like nothing can go wrong and like since then you've had so many um, setbacks, particularly the two England games. But yeah, oh true, true. But like if you look at the, if you look back to the year 2018, right, and compare 2018 and 2019 in terms of the Six Nations, right, there's not much difference between the way those competitions went, yeah. right? I Like as in, yes, they won a Grand Slam one, they didn't win the other, but some of the games are actually a whole lot closer than what we what we think when we look back mm. and I think coming forward then I'll, like the warm-up games 
Don't worry about uh, it. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're nothing, right? Um, I think, though, the England game, yeah, is a good flag because I think England kind of sent out a flair to the world about this is actually what our, when we have a strong squad, what we look like. And I think they're a really dangerous side and, and are, you know, heavy contenders to be mm. in the final. Um, but Ireland, I think, look, I don't want to be accused of being too positive. Um, I think, yes, they can win on Saturday, but I think they need to do, a, a lot has to go right for them. How's it going to go? And they have, the, they have the ability to do that. How's it going to go? Well, I think the bookies had, like us, a well, plus 12. I'd take that all day. I'd back Ireland on that. Yeah, I, I, I'd be so, I'd be so much against you on this. So we should, we should have a little, <laughs> we should have a little wager after Jamie, because we cut out the middleman. Um, so you, you think Ireland will at least cover the twelve point spread? Yeah. Okay. Um, two other things I wanted to bring up. One was in the book, because um, your, your departure was quite kind of unusual, shall we say? But you do get into that where. Um, on Monday I went to see the specialist medical consultant at the matter he confirmed a disc herniation caused by the impact of hitting the tackle bag with considerable force and that it's a, it's a fairly mad way to go out of the game yeah like I mean jeez you, you know, no one, very few people get to write their script on how they exit this right you look mm. back on take two of the most iconic figures of rugby right Paul of Irish rugby sorry um, you could argue world rugby um, Brian O'Driscoll and Paul O'Connell and how different both their endings were. Yeah. You know what I mean? Brian got a, like almost like an 18th month swan song. Um, Paul, like you didn't even really see it happen for half time in the France game mm. uh, four years ago. Um, and, and he never takes the field again, I think, after that. Had you even thought about it? I mean, you No, know. no. And that, like, of course not. Like, uh, in my head, and it, like, I suppose I'm still holding out for that phone call, but I'll never get it. Um, you know. Oh, you're holding out, all right. <laughs> oh, big new boots. You never know. Um, but sorry, yeah, like it's 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 uh, yeah, it's how do I put it? It's um, I kind of lost my train of thought on this mm -hmm. completely. No, like in terms of how it ends, it's a shock. Though. It's a shock. Like you 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 think you prepare for one thing. You like that's why you have insurance and all that just in case. But they, but then once you get all that, you don't think about it. You just go do what your job is and that's preparing the long the long term plan was for me to go to the World Cup mm. at an international level and then after that maybe either play club level in Ireland or go to France and play club for a year or two yeah something like that and all players have insurance for like not all players, players not no. all so okay no. you had insurance I had it yeah, yeah. I have insurance. you have insurance on your contract mm. and it's there it's okay it's not fantastic and it comes down um I think about 28 for most players and in props it's a little bit later okay. but it, uh, the percentages come down of, of what it is and it's capped and all sorts of things so you probably need I would always say have separate insurance for and yourself. how are you now fitness wise? Um, I'm okay mm. um, we were discussing this, this morning the, my, what my weight is these days uh, really? I'm, uh, I'm 104 kilos now playing I would have been um, like 111, 112 kilos, um, and I went, my lightest finished plane, I went down to 100.8 kilos, so a big drop. But it, that's because I literally, it was such a struggle, particularly after when I got injured, like I just simply could not do both things on the field that I needed to do and things that even to try and keep muscle mass on, you know, was, it was a big struggle for me. Jamie's very unique, uh, possibly the only Irish rugby player I'd say who was born in Israel um, because of his dad's background, which is very interesting, but I have to end with, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, and if okay, you don't get the reference, where's this um, you've been on, on the moon or something, um, are you going to start a podcast? <laughs> Honestly, Jamie, I want to know. I'm involved in podcasts. I advise you against them. It's a crowded marketplace. I would certainly yeah. not ask your Twitter followers. Do we have the caption there? Oh, uh, yeah. I think we do. Yeah, um, yeah. Where is it? Should yeah. I start a podcast? Jamie Heaslip. Yes, 18%. No, 82%. The beauty of this poll, if I put up a poll on Twitter, I put it up for a day so that if it's going wrong, uh, you know, there's a short shelf life. But yours was up for a few days. Ah, uh, sure. Look, I mean... Is that a yes or a no? If I took the opinion of what people say on social media of what I should do, I wouldn't be, a, technically, from what they tell me, I shouldn't be alive. No. Yeah. Okay. You've so. had massive promotion for your podcast, if, if it doesn't happen. Or if it doesn't happen, if anything, I should probably just do it, just to annoy people now, and 
They, at least they download the first episode, probably. Yeah. Or maybe. I don't know. It's like the guy from the newsletter. He brought out the book on the DUP and the um, clash for uh, the Cash for Ash um, scandal. And the DUP immediately um, started kind of threatening kind of legal action. And he's like, I've already gotten the best promotion. My sales have skyrocketed. So, Jamie, your promotion is there. Yes or yeah, no? Well, Are you, you going to bring out a I podcast? know what I like. I want an exclusive. Okay. Well, the reason I... the book, right? The, the reason the I asked about it was, yeah. like, or anything, all these different channels, social media included... Uh, uh, podcasts included. Um, I love the fact that you can cut out the middleman now and yeah. your voice goes straight to the person that wants to listen mm -hmm. to it. Um, and I think for players going forward, I think that's really, really important. Um, I think it's important that players have their own voice. I think it's important that, and that's what social media has done, is it's reframed mm -hmm. uh, how they can interact with people and interact with fans and interact for the, with the game. Yeah, we've, I, ru we've run over the clock here. Are okay, you like, sorry. Yes or no? Oh, am I going to do it? Yeah. I have no idea. Oh, God. I have that was no Jamie idea. Eastlip. <laughs> Took us three and a half minutes to get it. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'd recommend the book, though. Um, I'm I'm obviously not a rugby official. Oh, what we call some, the podcast? Some very, um, get, on to Jamie, get on to Jamie's Twitter account. What are we going to call the podcast? Um, Can we start a poll on yeah, suggested poll. names? Yeah. That's my next thing. Um, it should be called, like, No. Because that was okay, the 82%. No, 82 no, maybe. No, all in, or, or just the 82. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>